I want, I'm curious about how far this goes back for each of you, your fascination with mathematics. Jim, do you, can you remember back to your childhood? And was, was there a moment when it suddenly hit you, this stuff is really interesting? Well, in my case, it actually goes back to before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> because it turns out that uh, my grandfather could neither read nor write, but he could do arithmetic. And my father never finished high school, but I remember as a child watching him study trigonometry and some calculus. F mathematics is kind of the family business for me and my family and my kids. I have two twins that are STEM people, and it's all about mathematics with them too. I have nieces and nephews. But the time when it sort of personally dawned on me that mathematics was something rather extraordinary was when I was 15. When I was four, I, I decided I was going to be a scientist. So I'm 11 years into this process <laughs> by the time I'm 15 years old. And one day, my um, physics teacher uh, performed an experiment. And it, the thing that you have to understand is, for me, mathematics was always an element of my imagination. It was like reading science fiction or going to the movies or um, fantastical stories. To me, mathematics existed inside of my head, and I was peculiarly aware of that. But one day in a physics class, my physics teacher showed me an experiment, a very simple experiment. You just roll a ball down an inclined plane. You measure the distance versus the time. And you can write an equation which describes that. And to me, I tell people that's the, o that's the closest and only thing I have seen in life that looks like magic. <laughs> it's like we're all at Wa Hogwarts, right? Uh, you learn to conjure. The conjuring is with the tools of mathematics, not with the tools of Latin, as you would see in a Harry Potter movie. And so this actually burst upon my consciousness, 15 or 16 years old, and I was just, I've never recovered. <laughs> so did you feel like that moment in the classroom that sort of math was getting at, was able to describe reality there? No. What I understood about mathematics was that an element of my imagination apparently was accurately describing a part of what I considered outside of my head. And I'd like to return to this reality debate later so we can get into it because uh, there's a, there's a, let me do it now in fact, there's a subtle thing about reality that I'm not sure we normally take into account. Um, as was mentioned in the introduction, we, are, we know about reality through our senses, we build instrumentation, which are extensions of our senses, but the part of it that we could never get out of is the fact that we have a subconscious, an unconscious mind. They're kind of two, we're a duality, each one of us is sort of two beings. There's the rational being, and there's the unconscious irrational being. And even for scientists, as we observe reality, that silent partner is in there. Sometimes it generates false data. And so when you talk about math, the power of mathematics, to me, it's the discussion between me, the rational me, the universe, and the subconscious irrational me over which I have no control whatsoever. And out of that cacophony, there's this one language that seems to allow us all to have the conversation.